Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Art and Chat. I haven't done one of these in a while, so I'm pretty excited to bring them to you again. Um, for those of you who've never seen this type of video from me before, it's basically a little mini series where I have you guys join me in my studio for about an hour and I answer questions posted by my patrons and the questions can be about art, about careers, about life, about anything. And I'm also going to be working on a painting in real time so you guys can get a more intimate, realistic look at my technique and yeah, it's basically like a one hour live stream that's not really live. So let's get started. Okay, let us begin. Um, I'm just going to quickly talk about the painting a little bit before I start answering questions. So this one is going to be an ocean inspired piece. Um, as you guys know, I'm a huge fan of all things ocean. My boyfriend got me hooked up on it or hooked on it. So um, yeah, I've been loving like I got my scuba diving certificate this year and I've just loved going like I've always loved snorkeling, but scuba diving is just a whole nother experience. And I actually did the concept sketch for a mermaid looking girl um, right after my trip to Cozumel where we went diving. Um, it was my first like real scuba diving experience, like getting my license. Um, it was just absolutely incredible. And so I'm going to do a piece inspired by the scenery and the various coral structures that I saw there. Like it's just hard to describe. Um, to put it, I guess, in a way that people can understand, we, we, we dove about 100 feet deep and that's like a several story tall building. I would say like maybe six stories, six to seven stories if not more um so imagine you're like weightless and you're able to float as high as like a six or seven story building but you know obviously instead of a building it's like all living creatures um corals kind of look like almost underwater plants but they're all like living creatures with like mouths that feed on on various things and it was just oh my gosh seeing everything was so freaking surreal and um, I've been meaning to do a piece inspired by it for so long and I finally um, gave myself the opportunity to. Um, one of my awesome patrons pledged... <sighs> Sorry about that. My <laughs> webcam crashes all the time. This is not the first, so be prepared for more tragedy like this. But yeah, um, as I was saying, this is an ocean-inspired piece and I can't wait to do it. And um, I'm going to get started now with questions so that, you know, it doesn't crash on me again. Um, the first question is from a few different patrons and they've all asked me to um, explain or tell, tell which board I'm using to paint on. And that is the gesso board from the Ampersand brand. And I got it at Blix, which is my favorite art store. Um, I usually use their online website. Um, sometimes I go in in person because it's very therapeutic to shop um, at their in-person store. It's like heaven for artists. But yeah, lately I've just just to save time, and also their online store is usually a little cheaper, so I just order it online. And so this size, like eight by ten, I think. Last time I ordered it, it was like six to seven dollars each. And then if you get one that's like 11 by 14, it's usually, um, I would say eight to ten dollars. So yeah, it really depends. Um, they often have sales and they change the price. So it varies depending on when you go. But yeah, they're not cheap, right? Like they're not, if you're just practicing, I wouldn't recommend using gesso board. But whenever I do pieces for clients um, or for gallery shows, I like to use gesso board. They're really good quality. Um, I love the smooth finish and they don't have that like bumpy canvas texture and also um, they absorb the paint at the perfect rate. I think I've said this many times, but they absorb just enough paint to make it easy to apply layers, but they don't absorb too much so that um, it doesn't dry out so you can still blend. So yeah, they're some of my favorite um, surfaces to work with. Oh, and pardon me, I'm going to be awkwardly like um, stopping and starting my video just so it doesn't crash. So if you see me reach behind, it's because I'm trying to sync up the camera and my DSLR. Okay, so the next question um, is from Saruta and she asks, what do you do when you feel very discouraged artistically? Um, so... 
I, I seldomly get discouraged. I think for me, the biggest feeling I have is just artist block, like needing to finish work, but being too, I guess, lethargic or not having enough ideas. Um, but yeah, if you're going through something like feeling discouraged, like really negative and in your head, I would say to take a break, like especially not take a break from doing art, but take a break from social media, because I think and I, I might be wrong, so let me know if I'm guessing wrong, but I think a lot of discouragement comes from comparing yourself to other people and realizing that like your, your artwork is not as good or your painting, um, your progress is not going as fast as you would like, you're not improving as fast as you would like, or perhaps you're comparing yourself to, an, to another artist who is more popular, more successful, and that's a huge source of discouragement. And that is really toxic. Um, if you find yourself thinking that way a lot, um, I would recommend you to take a break from social media, stop looking at other people's lives and focus on reality. Focus on just slowly improving your craft without any distractions, without any pollution or negative thoughts. And, you know, give yourself like cut yourself some slack. Like don't expect to be a master overnight. But like when you surround your day to day um, feed and everything you view with like people who are masters or people who have like accomplished so much in their careers, it's easy for you to like compare yourself and realize like, oh, I'm not where I want to be or I'm not I'm not even close to like this person's level of success. And that discouragement can only hinder your progress. And while I think it's great to be inspired by artists and look up to people, um, I, I don't think you should compare yourself and turn it into like a negative thing. So yeah, if you find yourself getting discouraged from, from viewing artists or social media or comparing yourself or just beating yourself down, um, just take a break, T take a breather and just try to be like without your phone, without um, browsing Instagram or YouTube for a while and just kind of focus on improving on your, on your own. And there's so many ways you can do that. Like, um, I know like Instagram and social media has become a source of, of learning as well, but there's so many places where you can learn. Um, you can borrow books from the library. You can watch shows on PBS. You can do so many things and learn without um, feeling discouraged. Next question is from Freya and she asked me, can you tell us more about how you go about framing your art? The frames are so beautiful and I have always been curious how you go about framing your art as the frames are all pre-purchased. Um, sure, yeah, I could totally talk about that. So I do pre-purchase all my frames. I think it's a very, um, it's a very wise thing to do to save money because getting your art custom frame costs so much more than just getting um, a pre-made frame. Like, it's not just like double the price. It's like 10 times the price. It can cost you like a few hundred dollars to get a large painting custom framed. But if you buy a frame ahead of time, it only costs you maybe like, I don't know, like 50 bucks, 60 bucks if you can get a good deal. Or if you're lucky and you go to like an antique store or find like a sale of some sort, it can be even cheaper. So um, what I do is I buy the frame first. Um, I buy them in standard sizes, so like 11 by 14, 8 by 10, 16 by 20, and then I get the um, backing installed. So I install the frame professionally. Um, I go to Michaels; um, they're super nice to me. I've like I've gotten to know them because I go so often. So um, yeah, I get a pretty good deal on 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 their frame. Sorry, not I don't get a good deal. Sorry. Um, it's always the same price regardless of who goes in. I don't get like a special discount, but it's like about $20 to install the backing um, in addition to the cost of the frame, um, which is maybe 30 to $50. And, and that's on a big painting. If you get a small backing installed, like on an 8x10, it'll be maybe around like $10 or less. So that's how I, I go about framing without breaking my budget. So the next question is from June and she asks, how do you build a following on YouTube and not get discouraged when you have yet to make any sales? Love you, happy. Love you too, June. Um, the way you get discouraged from, from not making any sales or from like not, I guess, not succeeding or not, not being as um, proficient as you want in any angle of the art career is, I think I mentioned this before, but stop comparing yourself to other artists. Like just, 
it's just know that not everyone got to a place of success or even making a sale overnight. Like it takes a long time to even sell one painting or sell your first painting. So don't get discouraged. Um, like when you look at people making sales and then you look at yourself and you're like, oh, I haven't made any sales. I must be doing something wrong or I must be failing. Um, that's the wrong way to think because like you only see people's like finished product. You don't see the kind of behind the scenes struggles or the journey it took for them to get there. So yeah, it, it is really easy to be like, oh my God, this person sold so much or has so many views or made so many prints or whatever, and I'm not, so therefore like I must not be as good. But when in reality, you might just not be, um, not have had as much time as they've had on their path. And equally, even if you had the same amount of time, like if, if maybe you're comparing yourself to someone who started around the same time you did and they're growing a lot faster, they're selling a lot more, that's still okay. Like it's, you can't force people to buy your product. You can't force people to subscribe to you. People have got to make these choices on their own. And that person might have just struck a chord with an audience or gotten lucky and you haven't. And you can't blame yourself for not being as, as lucky as someone else, you know? Like that's not something you can control. All you can do is keep working hard and keep pushing and just wait for, well, not wait, but work towards your goal and work towards your your chance, your opportunity to come. Work towards your big break. Um, nothing is going to come out of like sitting and moping around and feeling discouraged about yourself. So yeah, if you're feeling like you're not making a sale and that's discouraging, keep pushing. Push even harder. Um, maybe like instead of worrying about making a sale, just paint something that you actually love, something that you believe in, and tell a story that, you know, um, really shows your voice. And when you do that, you might actually find um, that people respond better to it because you are being more authentic and your artwork, you know, has just like a overall more positive, more honest vibe. And then maybe then you'll make a sale. Like you never know, right? So yeah, that is my advice. I keep redoing this face. I'm having a little bit of trouble like multitasking. I think for a while I was um, I was pretty familiar with like talking, recording, and painting at the same time. But I think maybe I should <laughs> get a little bit more practice because it's starting to be a little bit of a struggle. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try my best. So usually when I start off paintings, I do like a concept sketch and then I transfer the sketch onto the canvas with like a, a graphite paper or something like that. So I have like an outline or some sort of blueprint to start with. But for this one, I'm starting like just freehanding from a blank canvas. And yeah, it's posing a lot of extra, like I just because I haven't done this in a while, it's it's there's some unforeseen problems with like measuring the proportions and getting everything, you know, proper, properly measured. But I'm gonna try my best guys, so yeah. Pardon me if I take a pause answering questions to just ramble on so I can focus on, on getting this painting measured right. I just want to make sure her face is like exactly how I envisioned it. Like whenever I start paintings, I envision what the subject will look like and I have like already an idea of what, what I want her face to be and I'm basically like sculpting my my painting until until that face appears and then I start doing the, the little details. So yeah, for this one, I actually am using, um, for reference, this beautiful uh, Indian actress. Uh, I cannot pronounce her last name for the life of me, but it's like it's like Padu Kone or something. Her first name is Deepika. Deepika. Um, I heard she's quite famous in India. I actually just found her face many, many months ago when I was just searching for beautiful faces um, to be inspired by. And then I told my my friend Umber about it and he is um, Indian American he was like oh my god Deepika she's like my celebrity crush so uh, he really uh, encouraged me to use her face as reference I was like almost too intimidated because her face is so freaking beautiful and perfect and I just like was always too scared to paint it because I was afraid I wouldn't do it justice so yeah that's why now I'm taking a little bit extra time on the underpainting part to just get her face looking um, you know, looking like like her, but also be in my style. I don't want to make like just a photocopy of, of her face. I want to make her, I guess, my interpretation of her. So yeah. Sorry if you guys were looking for 
an episode where I'm doing little detailed, like final details or something a little bit more interesting. Um, this is going to end up being like predominantly underpainting. Um, maybe I'll film another art and chat on this piece when I have moved on to like, you know, more layers and I can um, show you guys kind of the finishing touch stage. Cause I, I do realize a few of my, most of my um, art and chats have been kind of more like beginning stages. I just think it's more interesting for you guys to see because, um, you know, it's kind of like an ugly rough stage and there's a lot of struggle and I think it's it's a more accurate representation of, of what painting is like. It's, it's not always fun in games and people always said that it's nice, it's very encouraging to see the beginning parts being so rough because like it's so easy to want to give up in the beginning when nothing looks perfect yet, but yeah. Okay. So the next question is from Veronica and she asks, do you enjoy painting as much now as before, um, before you had to finish a painting to a specific time? Is it stressful at times? Um, I definitely enjoy painting the same, if not more, each day. Like, I think as time goes on, I just love it more and more. So, um, yeah, I think, I think maybe your question means like when you said before you had to finish a painting to a specific time. So like before when I didn't have to use, or I didn't have to deal with deadlines or painting for like clients or galleries and I can almost like freely paint on my own. Did I enjoy that more than now where I have to, I have kind of more solid deadlines um, and people that I have to answer, well not answer to, but like deliver pieces to. Um, no, I don't think having deadlines or having, um, you know, paintings be for a specific purpose. Um, I don't think that deters from my enjoyment. I think I will always love painting um, regardless of of who it's for or you know what the context is obviously commissions sometimes are a little less enjoyable because there's an added layer of stress because you want to make sure your client likes it so you want to make sure like it looks like the person that they want you to um, paint you want to make sure that you deliver on time so there's more stress but I don't think the stress makes it less enjoyable it's just like a different feeling in addition to the enjoyment um, but yeah I think like for me Painting has always been like my number one source of therapy. It's always been a very pleasant experience regardless of what I'm painting. Like just the physical act of sitting in my chair, or standing up um, in front of my easel and, and painting and just like smearing paint around the canvas or the wood panel. Just that, it just brings me joy. It's like getting a massage or something. Like it just feels so good. So yeah, um, it has not changed at all. Okay, I'm going to start going in with this black paint now just to kind of um, refine some of the lines that I feel confident in um, to so I can start like building up more shading. So I always, I mean, some people don't like to do this because black doesn't really mix well with other colors, but I personally love um, putting black down first because it's like the darkest value on my piece. And so once I establish the darkest and lightest, um, I can then start building the range of, of tones and values in between. So it's like a good starting point. But yeah, some people like don't like to start with black because then if you accidentally mix it, it muddies up or, or grays out um, whatever color you mix it with. But yeah, you just gotta be careful, I guess. Oh, that's too, that's too black. <laughs> I'm just gonna wash that out. Next question is from Analicia and she asks when will you make another art book or oh, sorry when will you make a an art book my first art book I don't have any previous art books I don't know why I said another probably just a brain fart um, I definitely really want to make an art book I have it on my next patreon goal so once I hit 5,000 on patreon I will use that money to um, make an art book because books you have to it's hard to print on demand you could print a book on demand but it costs so much more and I want to make sure that my book is affordable for most people so in order to do that I have to print um, in advance so I have to make like probably a couple of hundred books to keep the prices low and so for that I will need um, some cash to start off with so once I hit that goal on patreon I will start that process as promised um, that goal's been on there for a while now so it's gonna be I'm gonna definitely celebrate when I hit that goal and um, I'm probably gonna give all my patrons a special discount as well for all of their help because it wouldn't have been possible without it um, patreon honestly has like changed my entire life and it's allowed me to do so much more than I ever thought I could do um, 
So yeah, I'm definitely planning on making art book and I'm really looking forward to it. I just gotta, you know, wait until I hit that goal. So yeah. Okay, I'm gonna try to not answer a question while I do her nose because her nose is so beautiful and I wanna make sure I get it perfect. Seriously, this actress, I mean, if anyone else um, watching there is familiar with her, she is so stunning. Like, I don't think I've ever seen a more beautiful face and she's just like, <laughs> she took my breath away when I first saw her. I was just like Googling random faces and, um, you know, just kind of web surfing and then I didn't even know who she was. But the second I saw her face on screen, I just like gasped. I was like, who is this goddess? I must know and I must like paint her and make her like one of my paintings because she is like just stunning. So, okay. Let me just uh, do her nose. I love her nose. I love that it's got a little kind of bulb where the front of her nose is and a slight, ever slight bump. Um, I don't like like super perfect noses. I like button noses or noses with like a little bit of extra shape because in my opinion, they're way more interesting. So yeah, this isn't going to end up looking exactly like her, but I'm seriously going to try my very, very best. Usually I try to make all my girls look like this fantasy alien face. But for this one, I'm actually going to try to incorporate more of the actual reference photo because she is just so... Okay, I need to stop gushing because I'm just get, getting redundant, but yeah. And she's really fun to paint. Like, her face is all these, like, interesting lines and planes and... Yeah. Okay, moving on to the next question. The next question is from Caroline Scarborough, and she says, Do you have any advice for an artist struggling to share their art? Um... When you say struggling, I'm gonna just make a guess. Do you mean like struggling with the having the courage to put yourself out there online? Um, actually, I got asked this question too. I'm just gonna loop them into one answer um, from Jacinta. She says, were you afraid to share or to start your art account on Instagram in case you receive negative feedback? I've been wanting to start an art account for a while now, but I'm also so afraid no one is going to like my art and that it will just dishearten me and that I'd stop making art. So yeah, these two are kind of similar questions. Um, yeah, of course, you definitely have that fear because the internet is like a public forum and especially with, with social media and I feel like especially nowadays, like there's so much negativity online and because people feel very safe behind their computer screens or their phones, um, there's no repercussions for making a mean comment towards someone. Like you're not really going to get in trouble, you're not going to get any legal action. So people, and also you don't have to even reveal your identity you know a lot of times people will never go up to you in person or rarely will go up to you in person and insult you to their to your face it's a very awkward and very confrontational um encounter but online you don't have to deal with any of that like you can have free reign to say whatever you want you don't have to face the person you don't have to feel guilty you don't have you'll never get in trouble so yeah people are just way more open with negativity online and so i totally understand that fear i definitely considered it too um i think I was pretty lucky because when I started Instagram, it was a few years back and I don't think the cyberbullying was as prevalent. Actually, I feel bad. I don't even want to say it. I don't even want to call it cyberbullying because sometimes when people leave negative feedback, it doesn't feel like bullying. It's just like sometimes they'll just say like, oh, your proportions are off or like, oh, you need to work better on this and that. And like while it might be even helpful, like constructive criticism, I think to a lot of young artists or people who have never shared their stuff online or people who are just you know, a little bit more shy or have different personalities, like, it can be very discouraging and disheartening. So, um, I would honestly recommend that if you genuinely feel like, um, seeing negative, negative comments or cri criti critical comments on your artwork is going to really, really discourage you, I would recommend you to not do it. Because, like, like, I personally, I ha I'm a, pr I'm a pretty tough skin person. Like, I have a weird name. My name is Happy. So, I've been I've, I've had, I've dealt with people making fun of me or teasing me, um, and over the years, I don't think it's ever affected me, like, I would maybe just born this way, I've always been very tough-skinned, and, um, so, so I was totally fine starting my Instagram, I didn't have that fear, because, you know, I was like, oh, yeah, people are negative towards me, or whatever, criticize me, then, you know, screw it, I'll, like, whatever, <laughs> um, but yeah, if you're someone who's, like, a little bit more sensitive, which is totally fine, like, everyone has a different personality type, then I would recommend to stay away from the internet, um, it's not a friendly place, and even in the art community, I feel like 
the art community, we're really lucky. Like most of the people here are super sweet, uh, genuinely want to learn, genuinely interested in art, um, whether it's a hobby or a career. And I think that kind of unites us and helps us um, already have like a common ground to like have a lot of empathy for each other. But I have like, I follow some like beauty um, YouTubers or like vloggers and a lot of them get so much hate for, in my opinion, absolutely no reason. Like. It's just like they can't do anything, make any small mistake. They would just completely get like uh, annihilated online for like saying the wrong thing or making a typo or like, I don't know, just doing anything or like anything. Because like nowadays people will find a way to to be offended by anything. So yeah, um, if you're if you're if you don't want to deal with that, then do not make put yourself in a position where you have to deal with that, because I think like um, social media is very, very volatile at times. Um, that being said, I personally love it because most of my interactions are positive. Like 99.9% .9 of the messages I get and the comments I receive are super encouraging, not only to me, but to anyone who reads them. And, you know, I just, I love establishing a community of positivity wherever I go. So I've been very blessed in that way and I feel very thankful. But that doesn't mean that you're not going to see negative comments every once in a while. And like if you're sensitive to that um, and, and seeing it is tough on you, then I really recommend to at least think twice before you start one because it is going to happen. And the more the more your fan base grows, like the more people, more eyes there are, are the more eyes there are on your artwork, um, the more likely you're going to bump into someone who's going to say something bad about it. So, yeah, it's tough. It's really tough. Okay, the last question is from Faye, and she asks, what do you take into consideration when you decide what to paint for the background? Um, interesting question. So it really depends on what my intent is for the piece. Um, most of my paintings are very um, portrait focused, so they're focused on the subject, and the background only acts as like a, a supplement to um, bring out or enhance the subject. So in those cases, I will think about like, where does the subject live? What is her story? Where is her home? Where is she from? Um, how is she feeling in this background? Like if I'm painting a mermaid like I'm doing now, I obviously want to paint a lot of ocean themed backgrounds, um, maybe like dark colors if, if, the, if the subject has light skin. Um, so you want to do things that almost contrast yet complement your subject to make make her pop. But um, if I'm doing a piece that's like kind of more background heavy, where like the subjects are a part of the background or like a part of the environment, um, then I'll have a completely different like set of criteria. I think in those cases, I will probably um, think of the background first. So like be like, for example, a magical forest with like magical creatures and maybe a girl is in there. She's one of the magical creatures. In that case, like um, I will put a lot more thought into like um, every little building up every little detail of the background and the composition of the background. So like instead of relying on the on the subject to be the focal point or the only focal point, I'll also make sure that every other element in the background um, that needs to get some sort of focus or attention is, is brought to that attention. Um, if that makes any sense, sorry, it's a little bit confusing. But yeah, generally, um, it's okay, I think, to leave the background a little blank. Like, you don't have to um, fill up every square inch of your of your canvas with, like, all this detail. It's nice to leave a little bit um, of negative space and a little bit of simplicity so that it brings out more focus to the parts that are detailed, um, which in my case is usually the human sub- or sorry, the, the human slash spirit subject with like their, their their features on their face and their hair so usually the most detailed part of my paintings is like the facial features or the hair or the eyelashes and then um, the backgrounds are a little bit blurry and maybe I'll have touches of detail to show like light or you know highlights and things like that but um, if your background is going to be a focal point um, you want to make sure the details on your background are just as fleshed out as the subject but yeah like lately I've really been more comfortable experimenting with like almost plain backgrounds and just relying on the subjects um, features and the interesting parts of the subject to to make the entire piece interesting so yeah okay that is all the questions um, I might just end this 
uh, art and chat a little early. I know it's not quite an hour, but um, I gotta run. So um, I'm just gonna end this one early, but I hope you guys enjoyed working on this underpainting with me. Um, I really enjoyed this quick impromptu art and chat. And if you're working on an art piece right now, because I know a lot of you guys like to work along with me, um, I wish you the best of luck and I hope it goes well. And um, thank you all so much for watching. Um, thank you so much for subscribing. It really helps my channel out. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye.